All right, so welcome to my series of videos on managerial economics. And um, this video is the final video on the series of consumer behavior. And in this particular video, I'm going to teach on, um, I'm going to solve a question which is on maximizing utility, giving your income as a major constraint. And I'm going to use two approaches. I'm going to use the necessary condition, the sufficient condition approach. Then afterwards, I'm going to use the Lagrangian approach. Now, given that total utility is equal to x raised to the power 0 0.25, y raised to the power 0 0.5, given that our income is 90, price of x is 2, and price of y is 4. Okay. Now let's find the utility. Let's find the utility maximizing values of X and Y. Okay. Now remember the condition is mu of x over mu of y. That's the necessary condition. Is equal to px over py. So we need to get all the elements. So mu of x will be changing total utility over changing x. So when you differentiate 0 0.25 times x, so if you differentiate, you get 0 0.25 x raised to the power negative 0.75, y raised to the power 0 0.5. Then mu of y will be changing total utility over changing y. And that is going to give us, we multiply the power by here. So that's going to give us 0 0.5 x raised to the power 0 0.25, y raised to the power negative 0 0.5. If you differentiate. So mu of x over mu of y So mu of x over mu of y, this condition here is just like saying 0 0.25 x raised to the power negative 0 0.75 y 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.5 x raised to the power 0 0.25 y raised to the power negative 0 0.5 and it's equal to px over py, so two over four. Now we are going to do some indices issues here. So I want to divide the like terms. So 0 0.25 divided by 0 0.5 is 0 0.5. So x raised to the power negative 0 0.5 divided by x raised to the power 0 0.25 to be negative 0 0.75 minus 0 0.25. Then y raised to the power 0 0.5 minus, because you are dividing, to minus minus 0 0.5. And then two divided by four is 0 0.5. Two divided by four is 0 0.5. Now let's simplify it further. So now you have 0 0.5 x raised to the power negative one, y raised to the power one is equal to 0 0.5. And if we divide both sides by 0 0.5 again, we will now get x raised to the power negative one, y, of course y raised to the power one is y. So is equal to one. For this and this will cancel, then this and this is one. So this is like saying one over x times y is equal to one. And it's like saying y over x is equal to one. It's like saying y is equal to x. So the essence of the necessary condition, just, just note this. The essence of the necessary condition is to make either x or y the subject. The essence of the necessary condition 
is to make either y or x the subject. Okay, so we name this equation one. Then the sufficient condition is that you have to put this in the budget. So the budget line was dx x plus dy y is equal to m. So 2x plus 4y because px was 2, py was 4, income is 90. So let's name this equation 2. So it said y is equal to x. So put 2 in 1. Oh, sorry, 1 in 2. That means everywhere you see at y, you can put x there. So we now have 2x plus 4 into bracket x is equal to 90. So we have 6x is equal to 90. x will be equal to 15. And then if y is equal to x, it also means y is equal to x and is equal to 15. So the optimal values are x is equal to 15 units. Y is equal to 15 units. So these are the optimal values of X and Y. These are the optimal values of X and Y. These are the optimal values of X and Y. Okay. So this is one of the approaches. And the other approach is to use the Lagrangian theory. The Lagrangian theory. Now, the Lagrangian theory is like a mathematical theory that is used to solve every kind of constrained optimization question. The Lagrangian theory is a mathematical theory that is used to solve any kind of constrained optimization question. The Lagrangian theory. It's a theory that is used to solve any form of constraint optimization. Now, when I say constraint optimization, it is when you are constrained with something, even though you want to maximize something. So in our case here, even though we are constrained by our budget, we want to maximize our satisfaction. So we set up a Lagrange function. So Lagrange is equal to what you seek to maximize that utility of from X and Y plus lambda into bracket, your constraints. So always is Lagrange is equal to what you seek to maximize plus lambda into bracket, your constraints. So our constraint here will be the budget line. But then when you are writing the constraints, you know that the budget line is M, my, M is equal to PXX plus PYY. Now, because you want to find a turning point here, you Send everything to the left hand side so that it will be equal to zero. So if you put it here, we now have m minus px x minus py y. Okay. So in our equation, the Lagrange will be because the utility function was x 0.25, y 0.5 plus lambda into bracket. Our income was 90 minus px, which is 2, and then px as that's 2x minus 4y. Now, the idea behind Lagrange is that I want to differentiate the Lagrange function with respect to all the variables in the function. But let's expand it first. So we have Lagrange is equal to x raised to the power 0 0.25, y raised to the power 0 0.5, plus 90 lambda, minus 2x lambda, minus 4y lambda. So the first thing we are going to do is that we're going to differentiate the Lagrange with respect to x because the variables in here are three. We have x, y, and then lambda. All the rest are figures. So if we differentiate with respect to x, you now have 0.25x, negative 0.75, y 0.5. And remember, there is no x here. So this whole thing will turn into zero. Then since there is x here, it will be minus two lambda. Sorry, yeah, minus two lambda. Then there is no x here, so it will turn into zero. But since we are finding the turning point, we equate this to zero. So let's try and simplify this and make lambda the subject. So we now have 0.25x raised to the power negative 
y raised to the power 0 0.5 is equal to 2 lambda. If we divide both sides by 2, we will now have lambda to be equal to 0 0.125 x raised to the power negative 0 0.75 y raised to the power 0 0.5. So let's name this equation one. Okay. Now for the purpose of emphasis, I'm just going to repeat the Lagrange equation. So L is equal to X 0 0.25, Y 0 0.5, plus lambda 90 minus two X minus four Y. I'm just repeating for emphasis because I'm flipping the pages. So if you differentiate lambda with respect to y, you now have 0 0.5 x, 0 0.25 y, negative 0 0.5. Let me expand this so that we remember what we did exactly. So it was plus 90 lambda or lambda 90, the same thing, minus 2x lambda minus 4y lambda, yeah, okay. So if I differentiate with respect to y, we have this here. y is not here, so it will turn into zero. y is not here, it will turn into zero, but y is here. So it will be minus 4 lambda is equal to zero. So let's make lambda the subject. So we have 0.5x, 0.25y, negative 0 0.5 is equal to 4 lambda. Divide both sides by four. So if we divide both sides by four, you'll get 0 0.125 x raised to the power 0 0.25, y raised to the power negative 0 0.5 is equal to lambda, all right? So let's name this equation two. All you must know is that If lambda is here, now from equation one and two, all of them have the subject lambda. Okay, lambda is just a Greek alphabet. So we can say that from equation one and two, We can say lambda is equal to lambda. So let's go and look at equation one and two. Equation one was x, um, the lambda there was 0 0.125 x raised to the power negative. So here we had 0 0.125 x raised to the power negative 0 0.75, y raised to the power 0 0.5. And then the lambda in equation two was. 0 0.125 s raised to the power 0 0.25 y raised to the power 0 0.5. Now, from equation one and two, we need to make either y or x the subject. So mathematically, one of the simplest way you can do this is to divide one side by the other. So we can divide everything here by 0 0.125 x x um, raised to the power 0 0.25, y raised to the power 0 0.5. I'm dividing that side by the same thing, like its own. And of course, you use the left-hand side, you must do it to the right-hand side. Or what you use the right-hand side, you must do it to the left-hand side. So here too, will be divided by 0 0.125, x raised to the power 0 0.25, y raised to the power, uh, here is negative, sorry, here is negative. So y raised to the power negative 0 0.5. All that I've done is that I've divided both sides by one of them, and I, I divided it by one, the one on the right. So this and this will cancel. And here, 0 0.125 will cancel 0 0.125. So we now have x raised to the power negative 0 0.75 being divided by x raised to the power 0 0.25. So it will subtract to so minus 0 0.25. And then y, 0 0.5 being divided by y raised to the power negative 0 0.5, so minus minus 0 
And this side, because they have canceled, we will now have one. So if you simplify, it will now be x raised to the power negative one, y raised to the power one is equal to one. All right, is equal to one. And this will give us x negative one, y is equal to one. And the same as saying one over x times y is equal to one, or y over x is equal to one, and then y is equal to x. So we still come back to the necessary condition if you did not even do the Lagrange. But Lagrange is important because it, it is simpler to use when solving complex um, equations. Now we are left with the last differentiation. So we are now going to differentiate the Lagrange with respect to lambda. I remember the Lagrange is, I always repeat for emphasis, the Lagrange is zero point, I don't know, the Lagrange is s raised to the power 0 0.25, y raised to the power 0 0.5, plus lambda um, into brackets, so plus lambda into brackets, 90 minus 2x minus 4y. So I'm just repeating for emphasis. Okay. I'm just repeating for emphasis. So lambda, I'm sorry, Lagrange is equal to x 0 0.25, y 0 0.5 plus 90 lambda minus two X lambda minus four Y lambda. Please, you don't need to always repeat the Lagrange. I'm just repeating for the sake of emphasis because I'm flipping the pages. So the lambda, um, the Lagrange over the lambda will be equal to, so here we have no lambda here. So everything will turn into zero. So we have lambda here. So we now have 90 minus two X because lambda is here, lambda is here minus four y is equal to zero. And we can name this maybe equation four. We can name this other one here equation three. So we now say put three in four. So it means y is equal to x. So anywhere we see y, we can put x. So we now have 90 minus two x minus four into back x, x is equal to zero. So we have 90 minus six, x is equal to zero. 90 is equal to six x, x is equal to 15. If you divide both sides by six, you get 15. I remember from the necessary condition, y was equal to x. So y is equal to x is equal to 15. So we also say y is equal to 15. So the optimal values, of X and Y are 15 units and 15 units respectively, respectively. All right, so this will bring us to the end of the series of videos on consumer behavior. Kindly like, comment, share and most importantly subscribe to the channel for more content thank you very much for staying with us throughout consumer thank you